This is Vinny Chilerzo. And Taylor Lane from Russian River Brewing Company. And here's your craft beer and brewing tip of the week. I think what I'd like to do is start just giving some definitions on dissolved oxygen, what we call DO, shaken dissolved oxygen, or what we call shaken DO, and then TPO, which is total package oxygen. And these are three terms that we're gonna bounce around throughout this video presentation class today. Dissolved oxygen is really just simply us taking a dissolved oxygen meter and connecting it to a tank that could be a fermenter or a bright beer tank, and it could even be our centrifuge, and pulling a reading through this meter and getting a reading of dissolved oxygen. Now, we always want to be in the parts per billion. <laughs> if you're getting a reading in the parts per million, there's definitely something wrong <laughs> happening in our brewing process. So dissolved oxygen, simply put, is pretty much an oxygen reading that's going to be taken in a tank and there is one component at packaging, either in can, bottle, or keg that we're gonna be looking at. The difference between shaken DO and TPO, that's shaken dissolved oxygen and total package oxygen, is that shaken DO is us taking a bottle or can, putting it on a shake table for five minutes, and then taking that bottle or can and connecting it to one of our dissolved oxygen meters. And that's gonna pretty much just be the reading of the beer in a shaken state and with the pressure equalized, but not the concentration. Whereas total package oxygen is the entire sum of the bottle or can. It's the oxygen level in the liquid, in the beer, and it's the headspace. And this is often confused in the brewing industry, and we will go into a deeper uh, dive and go in more depth on the difference between shaken DO and TPO when we get to the packaging part of this presentation. In order to calculate total package oxygen from shaken DO, there are a few parameters that need to be figured out first. The first of which is temperature, which is very simple. You can take it on your first package that comes off the line. It's fairly stable for a few hours. We check it every two or three hours when our line is running. You also need to get the complete volume of beer and headspace. It seems daunting at first, but it's not very difficult. You just need to know the weight of your package, empty, your total volume of the package, and from there you can calculate using specific gravity to find out the volume of the beer and the volume of the headspace. Using the shaken DO, the temperature, and the fill volume, you can then calculate TPO with fairly good accuracy. We have done a few trials of using our very expensive piece of equipment that measures TPO for us and comparing it to this calculated measurement and we get within five parts per billion consistently. Yeah. So this is something that's very practical for someone that may not be able to afford this very expensive piece of equipment to do at their brewery. I was really surprised when we <laughs> got our hands on the smaller unit, the less expensive unit that also had a piercer that could connect to a proper DO meter. I was shocked, quite frankly. I didn't <laughs> think that the readings were gonna be as accurate as, or as close as they can. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars of difference between these two pieces of equipment, but this was really good information for us because every once in a while, our TPO tester goes down, it needs to be serviced. And that was one of the reasons why we wanted to have this backup system. And so the fact that we proved this, that we compared less expensive piece of equipment, we compared those numbers with the more expensive piece of equipment, really gave us confidence to know that, you know, not only could we rely on the more expensive piece of equipment, but, you know, in a pinch, we can fall back on the less expensive setup that more breweries have. And quite honestly, the difference between doing a calculated TPO using a shaken dissolved oxygen number really comes down to laziness. And I know that's being very direct, <laughs> but it, it's not that hard. And yes, there can be a little bit of wiggle room and margin of error when you're trying to weigh 
the can with the liquid in it to try to come up with the right weight of the liquid, mm -hmm. which as Taylor said, you need that number but with a decent scale that really isn't that expensive, you really can be quite accurate with this number. And, and you know, I mentioned earlier that it's one of the most confused terms <laughs> in the industry, the difference between shake and DO, DO and TPO. And I hear brewers all the time talk about their DO numbers. And for me, I would love to see the industry get a little more focused and have a little tighter parameters on how they use these phrases. And if you're talking about DO, what you mean is dissolved oxygen in your tank. And if you are talking about your bottles or cans, you're not necessarily taking a TPO reading because maybe you don't have the calculation done yet. You say shake and DO, but if you're actually running the calculation or you have a TPO tester, you use the term total package oxygen. It's important to note from that as well that most of the time, shake and DO will be less than total package oxygen. So the shake and DO is a more impressive number because it's lower, but there's more to it. To learn more about oxygen in the brewing process, click, click the, the link, link below. below.